Amen. Glad you're here today. Take your Bibles, if you have them, and turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and we'll get there in just a few, few moments. I wanted to, um, to come back today. There, was, there were things that were in my message uh, last week that I really didn't get to, and I wanted to come back. If you missed last week's message, uh, I want to encourage you to go online, listen to that. And uh, I shared my heart, you know, the last couple of years, I really feel like the Lord has taught me some things as well as uh, revealed some things that the church that we need to be talking about and it's emotional health, it's emotional health. And, and God has been taking us higher. We've talked about calling. We've talked about uh, how God loves to use us in our life. And then we shifted last week talking about living, uh, not emotional, but living in this uh, better place that God's people have been called to freedom. Amen. And that God's called us to live not in, out of emotion, not in the emotion. That's the way the world lives. God's called us to control our emotions. And I said to you last week, God's more concerned about what's inside than outside of you. He's more concerned about the inside you than the outside you. We talked about how we love to take care of the outside, right? We, we, uh, we love to fancy ourselves up. We like to, you know, some of us, it takes us a long time to get going, get dressed, we do our hair. And uh, I told you that God's more concerned about your heart than your hair. And for some of you, that's not a big deal because you don't have any hair. But uh, I didn't look at anybody this time. Did you see that? I looked at the camera. That's right. But watch this, God, God is concerned about your heart. And so today I want to go back to talk about uh, emotional health. I'm going to title this message, uh, Emotional Lift. Emotional Lift. God wants us to get out of our emotions, but he wants to give us an emotional lift. God made you with emotions. We said that last week. The same emotions that God has, he created you and I to have as well. What a cool thought, that the God of the universe, who hung the stars, as we'll read in just a few moments He has these attributes and these characteristics and he has these emotions and he created you to be a carrier of those those emotions, but not to be led by those emotions. And so that's the key is that we're not being controlled by our emotions. We're learning to control our emotions, right? I told you last week that, that God can't Uh, heal what you don't feel. God wants you to feel. It's good to feel, but not to get stuck in your feelings, not to to be buried in your feelings and in your emotions. God wants you to channel your emotions in the spirit. Everybody say in the spirit. Spirit. And that's the key, right? As I often say, and I I know it's a broken record, but I'm going to remind you, you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in this body. And it's the spirit part of you. That's the part that God wants to connect to. That's the part where this word comes to life inside of you. That's where you get that place, that intimate place with the Lord and makes it so powerful, but it's in the spirit part of your life, right? Emotions are a gift from God, but we need to remember that Jesus paid for our emotional and mental freedom on the cross. Amen. Everybody point, your, point to your brain, your head. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say say it again. I have the mind of Christ. The same thoughts that Jesus has, I have. Come on, that's good stuff. I could just let you go right there. I'd be enough today. I'm preaching fast today, so you better take quick notes because I'm I'm on the move. Or I can really slow it down. (laughs) Let me talk real quick about a couple things here. The first thing I want you to write down if you're taking notes is God... Guard your heart is the most important thing that God wants us to do. In Proverbs 4, 23, we see that above everything else, Solomon says, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. It's the wellspring of life. And it all comes back to your heart. Everybody say, guard your heart. Guard your heart. You know, we tend to guard everything else more than our heart. Think about it. We guard our house. We guard our vehicles. Parents, we guard our kids. Right? We're, all, we're all about guarding right? and protecting, uh, and yet we don't protect our heart. And Proverbs says, above anything else, more than anything else, protect your heart. It is the core place of who you are. It is the spirit part of you. That's the part that the enemy wants to come in and pollute. That's the part of you that the, the enemy wants to come in and distort and twist. You've got to learn to protect your heart above anything everything else. Make it your number one priority. Everybody say, guard your heart. Here's the other thing that's so important is you need to remember that Jesus wants to be the center of your heart. 
Jesus wants to be the center of your heart. He wants to be the core place in your your life, right? He wants to be the the person in your life that matters more than anything else. We've got to learn to protect that, though. And here's the reason why, because if we don't, right, we need to understand that, that God is not going to force anything on you. And here's a great truth today. God put you in charge of your heart. Think about it. God made us, and he could have made us a lot of different ways, but God put you in charge of your heart. It's your responsibility. Everybody say, it's mine. God created you with free will. He could have have, uh, said, you know, no, I'm going to protect your heart. No, but he said, you protect your heart. You guard your heart. It's the most important thing, that you are protecting your heart. Everybody say, it's my job. I I wrote this down uh, because so many times we say, uh, I, you know, I lose my joy when this happens or when I see this person, come on, when I, when I see that, that person coming, man, I, I, my joy just goes out, out the window, right? No, no. Watch this. Your joy is your job. Your joy is your job. You've got to own it. You've got to, you've got to, again, guard your heart. You've got to make your joy not contingent on another person. You, you hear me say, I mean, I love my wife more than any of you. <laughs> is that okay? Yes, it is okay. And, and, and I'm in a covenant relationship with her. But you know what? I learned a long time ago that my joy doesn't come from her. Parents, your joy can't come from your kids. Spouse, you, your, your joy can't come from each other. Your joy can't come from Georgia football. Your joy... <laughs> Your, your joy can't come through your job. Now, God can bring joy in the midst of those things, but you've got to make your joy your job. You can't excuse your joy to someone else because what you're doing is you're giving that person the authority over your joy, and God gave the authority to you. It's God's joy, but his joy is your strength, right? So the enemy wants to make you weak so that you don't have God's joy in your life consistently. But you've got to learn to make sure that you are focusing on your joy. And remember, to to rejoice is a choice. I say that often. You've got to choose joy, and then you've got to protect it. I would say it this way, fight for your joy. Protect it. You've got to stay focused on it. If you don't do that, it will get robbed. And as the good old song says, The joy doesn't come from this world, so the world can't take it away. Amen? Come on. The the world says, well, this will bring you joy, or this will bring you pleasure, this will bring you happiness, and what it does is it leaves us empty. God says, hey, protect your heart, protect your joy. Know that Jesus is the one that brings that joy and that strength into your life, but you got to fight for it. you got to protect it consistently. And you got to tune into his voice, right? Because your joy can't, again, come from other people or you'll find that it gets depleted quickly, quickly. This, uh, we, I know we had the big storm that came through Thursday night, and I uh, hope you all weathered that well. Uh, we've had, had some things, uh, you know, power goes out, and um, so we, we haven't had uh, internet, or not to sound like a sad story, but no cable, uh, internet, still don't. Uh, and so it's been kind of quiet, you know, around, around the house, and at first it's like, this stinks, you know? And then the power came back on, which was nice. Uh, And it's like, it sure is quiet without internet. And uh, come on, we, we are, well, I won't say that. We are so connected that we are disconnected from the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I sat there yesterday and I, I thought, you know, it feels awkward, you know, but after a while, like I really begin to enjoy it. I still want my cable to come back on, but, but I, I, I begin to rest in it. I begin to relax in it. And all of a sudden it was like, I could hear a whole lot better because that's what happens, right? When we, when we'll disconnect, we, we can hear more clearly. We can hear things we normally don't hear. I'm believing that for men this week that go on this retreat, that as they pull away, they're going to hear things they normally don't get to hear, that they're going to focus and they're going to pull back and disconnect so that they can reconnect to what matters the most, and that is hearing the voice of Jesus in your life. And so that only happens, though, as you unplug. And that's a great word. 
unplugged. We're so plugged in that we can't hear the right things and hearing the Word of God consistently in our life, and we've got to learn to focus on that. So we're protecting our heart. We're, we're hearing God's voice greater than the other voices around us in our life. Here's a, another key point I want you to write down. Where the mind goes, your life will eventually follow. As a man thinks in his heart, the Bible says, so is he. Right? So our thoughts are important. That's why we've got to guard, because our heart and our mind are connected. And so we've got to make sure that we are sifting through our thoughts. I'll ask you this question this morning. What are you allowing to bake or to marinate in your mind? What are you, you think of your mind as a, as a, uh, as a, an oven. What are you allowing to, to, to bake there? What are the thoughts Are they good thoughts? Are they negative thoughts? If they are, then guess what? The aroma of your life is going to be negative. I love it when I can smell chocolate chip cookies in the oven. Come on, somebody. They got this new uh, cookie place in town. What's it called? Crumble. Crumble. Go to Crumble. (laughs) Do a plug for Crumble. That's some good stuff right there. That's, uh, that's, That's like next level heavenly cookies. Like a whole nother... But I love the smell of things baking, you know, in a good way, especially sweets. I'm not a huge sweet person, but uh, I love that aroma. Same thing in your life, right? What are you baking in here? You've got to, the aroma of that will infiltrate your life. It will create an atmosphere. Come on. It'll create an atmosphere. And wherever your mind is focused, your life eventually will get there. And so you've got to learn to battle in your thoughts for the right things. Uh, and, and when you do that consistently, I, I would say this, some of us, uh, we need to get out of our own heads. We need to get out of our own heads. It's time to get out of your mind. It's time to get out of your mind. Turn to somebody and say, you're out of your mind. Come on. We, we get so captured by our thoughts and God says, hey, get, get, get out of it. We become our worst enemy. We help the devil out too many times. I do. We can think ourselves into these situations and fantasize these things. And before you know it, we're we're depressed and nothing's even happened. (laughs) Because we got to get out of our own way. We got to get out of our mind. Here's the, the next thought there God wants you to have consistent peace. Consistent peace. It's not just experiencing peace one time in your life, God wants it to be consistent. It's like a river, the Bible says, refers to it. It's like a river of joy and gladness that flows into our life. God came and he brought Jesus to come and die for our sins, not so that we could have partial peace, so that we could have consistent peace. What if you went to a restaurant here in just a little bit and you ordered a cheeseburger with bacon on it? Mm, That sounds good, doesn't it? And they brought back to your table half of a hamburger. What would you say? You would say, oh, this is not what I ordered. This is only part of what I ordered. How many times I think we're walking around with partial peace? There's no such thing as partial peace, by the way. Jesus says, I give my peace to you. In this world, you have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He said, I don't give peace like the world gives it. I give it in a different way, and his peace is always consistent. Consistent. Don't you like people that are consistent? Come on, we do. Yeah, because we like things in life that are consistent. Unlike my cable right now. We, we like consistency, right? You're, you're, I'm sure your job, you, you like consistency. When things are measured and there's a flow toward them, God wants your peace to be consistent. Jesus came not so you could have partial peace. He came so that you could have full peace. Everybody say all of it. By the way, you will not have peace if you're worrying all the time. You will not. Worry, even in that passage, Jesus, he's talking about worry, right? Worry brings subtraction to your life, not addition. But we begin to meditate. That's what worry is. God made us with the ability to meditate, right? And so the enemy uses that against us, and we start fantasizing over all these things that probably aren't going to happen, by the way. And we begin to worry. We begin to stress. And what we do is we deplete ourselves. We deplete our joy. We deplete our peace. We deplete our hope and our trust in the Lord as a result of that. So get out of worry and get into worship. Isaiah chapter 40, I wanted to 
uh, read this passage. This week, I, I read some of this to the staff, and uh, everybody say the word renew. renew. I just felt that word in my spirit this week. That there's things that God's renewing right now. There's things that he's renewing. Say it again, renew. Renew, renew means to make something new again. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new beginning, a new start, if you will. And I, I wanted to read this passage out of Isaiah, and I won't read the, the whole chapter, but I'm start at, at verse 25. And I love it because this is one of those places in the Bible where God, God is talking, and he is somewhat uh, confronting. He's like con- confronting the reader here, right? He's, he's asking questions. I love it when God asks questions. And he's basically, you can, I, I think as you read this, I don't know, I try to, you know, hear different things, but uh, there's almost some sarcasm in God's voice here. <laughs> you think God can be sarcastic? I don't know. But I, I feel like that's part of what he's saying here, but you'll f- see the familiar part of this passage in just a moment. Listen to what it says. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes. Everybody look up. And look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by God. So he's saying, what, you, you think God's forsaken you? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. Listen to what he says. Say this with me. Come on. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. Listen to what he says. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Come on. God sees you like an eagle. Come on. God sees you like an eagle. I love that that's, that's the comparison that, that he gives to us. What, what, what does a, an eagle, it doesn't just hang out on the ground. What does an eagle do? Well, the identity of the eagle is to soar. Here's the first point if you're taking notes. Write this down. We serve the God of the lift. You got to get this today. It's going to move quick. We serve a God that is lifting. He is always about lifting. He is the one that comes alongside of us and pulls us out of the miry clay and he set my feet. He lifted me up and put my feet on firm foundation, on the rock of Jesus Christ. I mean, he's the God of the lift. They will mount up his wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Come on, you got to get this in your spirit today that God wants to lift you up. By the way, he says, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men. So it becomes this incredible exchange of building hope. Those that hope and trust in the Lord. One version of the Bible says those that wait on the Lord, but it's not just a twiddling thumbs waiting. It's this waiting of expectation. It's this strength that comes in your life. And by the way, it renews the strength in your life when you do it. We quote that scripture a lot and we say, and God will renew our strength. But our strength is renewed by us trusting and waiting in the Lord, hoping in the Lord. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. And we serve the God of the lift. He is always there to lift us up. He is never going to abandon us. He's always there to come alongside of us and pick us up again to put our feet on a firm foundation. I love what Psalm 3.3 says. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. One version of the Bible says, the glory and the lifter of my head. Come on, God's lifting some heads up today. Get your head up. Get your head up. You know, when I walk naturally, I I walk with my, my head down. I don't know. It's just how I walk. Don't make fun of me and don't give me a complex. But I walk with my head down, not because I'm upset. It's just how I, how I walk. And, but occasionally I'll hear the Lord say, get your head up. Get your head up. Look up. Everybody get your, get your eyes up. Look up. 
It feels awkward, right? Because we, we're focused on what's around us, but, but our perspective changes when we look up. You can look back, back down. This, this focus that comes in to our life, right? James 4.10, I love this scripture. It says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will, say it with me, lift you up. Come on, that's just what he does. But we've got to humble ourselves. And if we'll humble ourselves, God says, hey, I'm going to be there to be the wind in your sails. I'm going to be there to lift you up. You're going to go higher as you look to me as the author and the perfecter of your faith. So what are you saying, Pastor Jason? I'm saying get your eyes up on Jesus. Get your eyes focused, not on the things going on around you, not on the people around you, not on the circumstances. Come on, not on an election. I'm going to keep saying it. The the church of Jesus Christ is not contingent on this election. So whatever happens, we've got to know who we are in Christ and that God is ready to use the church. By the way, by the way, the church is the answer. Come on. As we humble ourselves before the Lord, right? God desires to use the church of Jesus Christ and and he's going to do it. The question is, will we be a part of it? Are we going to be in, in that fold that, that God's using in these last days? So we've got to keep our eyes up. The psalmist said in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the mountains or to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Come on, say that with me. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. So the psalmist reminds us, look up, look up. You know, I'm not a big, uh, I I enjoy being in the woods and I love hunting, but I'm not a turkey hunter. I've I've gone turkey hunting before, but, uh, you know, you you hunt for turkey in the springtime, not this time of the year, which everybody thinks Thanksgiving, like this is the time, but you you don't. And I like to turkey hunt. I don't do it a lot. But when you turkey hunt, you can't, uh, you hunt on the ground. You can't be in a stand. It's illegal to, to hunt turkeys from a stand or from up in the trees. And the reason is, is because turkeys never look up. They just always, they're always looking down. They don't, so it's unfair to hunt that, that type of game because it's a disadvantage, you know? And so they just always, you know, just walking around. Turkeys are so funny to watch in the woods. And so what are you saying? I'm saying, don't be a turkey. Don't be a turkey. There's going to be times you get distracted and things are going on around you and you've got to, you got to focus on them, but don't forget to look up. Look at Jesus, fix your eyes on him. As the author says, the author of your faith, the perfecter of your faith. Come on, he's molding some things in your life right now. You got to believe that God's doing some things that you cannot see right now. Amen. I love what David said in Psalm 42, 5. He said, why are you cast down, O my soul? He's talking to himself. Why are you in turmoil with me? Hope in God. In other words, he he reached down in his depths and he said, why are you so down? Why are you depressed? Why are you dealing with this? And then he speaks to himself. He says, you will hope in God. Come on, we got to start talking to ourselves. We got to start speaking things over us. You will hope in God. Amen. Amen. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. You know, the enemy comes at us with these lies, as I illustrated for you about a month ago. He shouts his lies, but God whispers because he's close. And the enemy loves to, to use words like always and never. By the way, I want to I encourage you to check those words in your own vocabulary. Well, you always act this way, or you never, like those are big words. Those are big words. And so the enemy knows how to use them as well. He comes and he says, your marriage will never make it. You'll never get out of that pit. You'll, you'll never be able to have that career. You'll never be able to get that raise. You'll never and always, always, right? That's what he does. He just comes back and he repeats the same thing, maybe in different ways. But Jesus combats every always and never, amen? Because God is always there. He'll never leave you or forsake you, right? Even Jesus' last words to his disciples were, and I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth, always. 
He is always there. So we take the lies of the enemy and we submit them to the truth of who Jesus is in our life. But we got to look to him. We've got to focus toward him. Here's the next point right here I want you to get. There is a raising power in you as a believer. This is the message right here. There is a raising power. We serve the God of the lift, and he wants us to look to him today. We got to get our eyes not on the things of this world, get our eyes on him, guarding our heart while we do this. Stay with me. There is a raising power in you as a believer. Come on, somebody's going to get a raise today. Not money. <laughs> Although I'm about ready to take up an offering. We had an offering and I know you're still giving, but uh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I just miss having a good old-fashioned offering every now and again because it's worship. Anyway, sorry, I distracted myself. This raising power is so important in our lives. God has given you everything you need. If Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, he has given you everything you need to walk, not just getting through life, but walk in victory in this life. It's in you. When you submit your life to Christ, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence on the inside of you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Remember in the Old Testament, they could only get to God's presence through a priest. And then the priest could only go to the Ark of the Covenant or behind the Holy of Holies, the, 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 the second tier of the veil, once a year on the Day of Atonement. But remember what's recorded in the Scripture in Matthew, that when Jesus gave up His Spirit on the cross after shedding His blood for you and I, that the temple curtain was ripped in half. I'd have loved to have seen the angels standing there ready. Is it time? Is it time? Can I, I, is it time yet? And he, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came on this earth on the day of Pentecost and now has taken up residence inside the heart of every believer. So get this. Come on, we're a spirit-filled church. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Don't we still? Do we? Okay, I'm just checking. What would happen if we let this power loose on the inside of us? It would flow out. <laughs> there would be an outflow. There would be an outpouring of the Spirit. We're sitting back waiting for revival to happen. Guess what? Revival's already happened. <laughs> it's in me. Am I going to release it? Am I going let to it, let it flow? So what you say it's a raised power. Well, remember what Paul said in Romans. Listen to what, what he said. He said, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Come on. Did you hear that? And if this spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your moral bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. What does that spirit do? That spirit raises it's, it's a raising spirit. Think about that. The same spirit that raised Jesus out of that tomb on Easter morning is alive in you today. And God positioned you and I on this earth for such a time as this, and he did not leave us or forsake us. He gave us everything that we need for victory in every area of our life to conquer any territory that God puts in front of us because we have the Holy Spirit. Every challenge. You see, the enemy comes to oppress and depress. He comes to push us down. He comes to, to prevent us from experiencing this raising power. But it's a raising power. The key is, are you going to let it raise? We say, well, how do, how do I do that? You've got to start believing that God wants to do something higher in your life. That's our series. You've got to start believing. And if you're, if you're down and out right now, if you, if you feel that you're, you're in a mud puddle or you feel like you've you're, you're just been spinning your wheels, getting nowhere, maybe you've been battling depression, maybe you've been uh, praying for a healing to happen in your life, maybe your marriage needs a breakthrough, the enemy wants you to stay stuck. 
And so in those moments, you must start believing, first and foremost, that that power is in you and that that power needs to be released. And so what you, what you do is you say, no, I'm, I'm going to start taking steps of faith. I'm, I'm a child of the Most High God. I have God's Word in my life. God's Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. I'm no longer going to be stuck in my shame and in my regrets and, and in my mistakes any longer. That sin pattern is broken in Jesus' name. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in me. This curse is broken over my life, over my family. My marriage will live and not die. Amen. I believe today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what, what Paul said in Acts. I'm going to talk myself happy. Come on. You got to start speaking over yourself. You got to start confessing who you are in Christ. The, the enemy doesn't care if you know who you are. He cares if you speak over who you are. You've got to declare some things over your life. What does that do? It causes that raising power to rise up. Sounds like a good slogan for an NFL football team. Pray for the Falcons. It's a rough year. They're not rising up. They're, they're rising down. Some of us feel like the Falcons right now. It's time to rise up. Come on. It's time to rise up. You will be like the eagles spreading your wings to soar. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you're an eagle. By the way, eagles eat snakes. Eagles were made to soar. The enemy doesn't want you to get the wind underneath your wings because he knows then you're going to get vision. You're going to be able to see things at a different level. You're going to find that your strength gets renewed when you start soaring in the Spirit, when you begin to start rising up. Come on, I'm talking to somebody here today. It's time to rise up. It's time to get mad at where you're at and allow God's Spirit to become alive inside of you. Some of you have been suffocating. It's time to rise up. Everything you need is inside you. That's not some new age stuff. It's new age if it's not talking about Jesus. God gave us everything. He equipped us with everything that we need to rise up, to get strong. Focus on Him. Look at Him. Because He's the God of the lift. And maybe you needed a lift today. The enemy's been dragging you down. By the way, some of you may have been helping the enemy drag other people down. Don't be a drag. Because this power is alive in us. I think one of the great tragedies when we get to heaven, it's hard to say there'd be any tragedies, but maybe regret. Even if we hear Jesus say, well done, like you made it. <laughs> but for me, I don't want it to be, yeah, you made it. But did you not realize everything that I gave to you in the power of the Spirit, what could have been, in other words? What would happen if you would allow the Holy Spirit to come in? And again, how do you do that? You just start speaking things over you in your life. You start confessing. You get this boldness on the inside of you. And you start articulating it and creating this atmosphere around you where the oven of your life, if you will, starts to smell like chocolate chip cookies. Amen. All of a sudden, let me, can I just tell you? I'm a, I was going to tell the men the, this this week. We're, we're, about, we're all about reading this word. I tell you, read the word. That's great. Read the word. But there's nothing more powerful than you speaking this word. Some of you need to go home today and you need to pick up your Bibles and don't go tuck yourself in a corner. You need to go and you need to speak this word over your house. You need to speak this word over your family. Speak. It's that spoken word. Amen. What are you doing? You're, 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 doing the, you're letting this raised power come to life on the inside of you. And all of a sudden, you begin to lift because the God of the lift always comes to help us do what we cannot do. And in our weakness, He is strong. Amen? Let Him lift. Let Him lift. Would you lift to your feet right now in this place? And we're going to sing, but I'm going to do something today. And we did it in the first service. I'm opening up this altar. And I preached really quick today. Did you notice that? You notice? But could we just take some time just to get before the Lord? And if you want to come up and kneel around this 
altar today. Maybe, maybe there's nothing that's really wrong, but maybe, maybe it's just allowing this power to get strong again in your life. I know this is something you know, but, but sometimes, again, we forget what God's given to us. And maybe it is a hard time for some of you right now. Maybe, maybe there's some challenges. That, but remember, humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. It's a promise. But some of us today, we just need to come, and we need to surrender some things in our life as well. Or maybe you just, maybe you just want to get before the Lord and say, God, here I am. Bring that new power we sang about earlier in this service. Bring that new wine into my life. Bring that, that new beginning. Renew today your hope back in the Lord and your strength will be renewed as well. Amen? I mean, God, we just invite you over these next few moments, God, just to come and minister, Lord, in your people's lives, in their hearts and their minds, God. I thank you that you're the God of the lift. I thank you for people that are being uplifted today, Lord. I thank you for some eagles that are going to spread their wings today and fly and soar for you, God. I thank you, Lord, supernatural strength, Lord, that you're bringing to people right now, Lord. I speak peace over people right now. I speak healing over people right now, God. We thank you, Lord, for your work that you're doing in our lives. We submit to it, God, and we humble ourselves before you today. We give you all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you come? Maybe a husband and a wife need to come today. A family can come to the altar today as we just press into the Lord. Lord, we know that you can do the impossible today. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still
your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 my spirit um, it's a it's a raising power but it's a staying power it's a staying power and and I don't know what that would be related to for someone that needs to hear that but uh, again there's there's some things that don't need to stay but there's there's a staying power to hold steady to hold steady and I just I speak that over somebody today. It's a raising power, but it's a staying power. And just like that consistent peace, it's not, it's not there one day and then gone the next. It's, a, it's steady. It's a staying power. And it helps us stay the course. It helps us take the next step of faith toward what it is that God desires to do. And, and uh, I, I just want to tell you, come on, you may feel like you're at the bottom right now, but God is going to raise some things up. You've got to start speaking it. Faith is not a feeling, right? Faith is not an emotion. You've got to speak it. And once you start doing that, you realize that God brings the lift. God brings you higher. Everybody say higher. Come on, we're going higher. We're going higher. I may just do this series for the next year. What you think? We're just, we're just going to keep going higher. What do you think, Mel? Maybe that's what we need to do. We just need to always be thinking higher. Come on. Keep, keep talking it. Keep speaking it over yourself. God does not see you in your pain and in your hurt. He sees you as on top, that you are the head and not the tail, above only, not beneath. Blessed coming from the north, south, the east, the west. It's a raised power that he's put on the inside of you. Come on, let's let it flow through us in our lives. It's there. It's everything that you need. It's everything that you need. Amen. Amen. Can I bless you from up here? Lord, we love you today. We honor you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we ask you to forgive us today. Forgive us for not reverencing and remembering, Lord, your Holy Spirit in our life. If we've grieved the Holy Spirit, God, we ask that you would forgive us today. But Lord, I speak over every person in this place and those that may be watching today. I thank you for the lift of the Holy Spirit in their life. I thank you that in their weakness today, Lord, they would be strong in you and your mighty power. I thank you for staying power today over your people, God, that you're leading their path, Lord, that you're leading them. And if they've been in a wilderness time, God, I thank you that you're leading them out of that time, that they're not going to get stuck in that wilderness because you're there with them to be with them and you'll never forsake them. So, Lord, blessings today, Lord, I pray over them. I pray favor, Lord, over them as well in the workplace and in our young people in their schools and their relationships, God. I pray that you would protect them and keep them safe today. And, God, we lift up our nation again to you. We speak that no weapon formed against this nation will prosper. And, God, we pray for those that are in authority. We pray for this election today. But God, in spite of what may happen or, or things not turn out the way that maybe we think they should, God, we know that you are still on your throne and you have called us to be 
the church of Jesus Christ. And we are alive in Christ. We are alive because of the blood that you shed for our lives and that we will be part of the solution. We're going to be part of the answer and we'll continue to pray and lift up this nation, God, believing that you will do it again. You'll do it again. And so we thank you for that. Give us a great week ahead, God. Thank you that our, heart, our thoughts would be higher, fixed on you, on things above. And Lord, you would lead our hearts in every decision that we make. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. What a great time of worship and an awesome word we got to hear today. We are so thankful that you got to tune in and join us. So if you gave your life to Christ for the very first time today, we want to know about it and we want to hear from you. So please go on our website, fill out a digital connection card so we can celebrate with you. And if you have a prayer request or a praise report, we want to know too, because we are a family and we want to believe together that God can do anything. Also, there's multiple ways you can give. You can go on our website, you can text to give, or you can give on our new Realm app. So go online and give so we can give back to the kingdom to continue to make an impact locally and globally. Thank you again for tuning in. We can't wait to see you next week.